Hello there YouTube, Devin here again, and uh, today I have another helmet video for you. And uh, this one's been requested a few times, but I've just been looking for a really good deal on one, and uh, one that's in nice condition, uh, because there's one, there's people that are selling them for new for way more than they're worth. Uh, this one's new, it does have some storage scuffs on it, but I got it brand new for $5. Uh, so I thought it was a pretty good deal for $5, and... Um, it's uh, the East German uh, M56 helmet, and uh, this is the latest version of the uh, East German M56 helmet, and we'll, we'll go over all the versions I can remember off the top of my head. There's a ton of other versions of this helmet I'm not going to get into. I'm just going to stay with the standard military models. All right, there's like para models of this helmet. Uh, well, not para models because they East Germans ended up using a Polish paratrooper helmet, but there was thought of this eventually becoming a para helmet, and there was a motorcyclist version, and there was a police version, and tons of other stuff. We're not going to get into those. We're going to get into the standard military versions of this helmet. Um, this helmet actually has one of my favorite histories of any helmet because it's got its roots kind of in Nazi Germany and everything like that, and then a lot of um, Soviet influence, but Soviet influence that's hands-off. Uh, so, this helmet uh, initially came to be, uh, it was developed by two guys, I forget their names off the top of my head, um, in, in the 1942 helmet trials, in Nazi Germany to find a cheaper, simpler, more effective replacement for the M35s and the M40s that were currently in service. All right, the war is in full swing at this point. They're looking for to save some money and increase their protection. So these two guys go to the, the trials and this helmet performs great. Uh, as you can see, it was taking, this helmet took a lot of its design features uh, for modern day tank armor in the regards that you can make your armor more effective by sloping it, all right? So you can use less metal and increase your protection by sloping your armor. And so this helmet draw, uh, drew from those same principles as the tank. So, and it worked quite well because of that. Now the original one had three big rivets, uh, just like the uh, M40 helmets and the M35 helmets did, and it took pretty much the same liner. It had some little tabs on it. It wasn't perfect straight, but it had little tabs that stuck off to allow that uh, ring that the liner sat on to fit the slope of this helmet. So, and that one uh, came out, uh, and it was rejected personally by Hitler. A lot of these two guys developed a lot of helmets over the war. Uh, and it was designed, uh, this design was personally rejected by Hitler because it didn't look like a Stahlhelm. Uh, it didn't look like the, the normal German Stahlhelm. So that was disappointing because this would have been a very, very effective helmet for them if they had started issuing it. Um, and then later they came back in 1944 with a kind of remodified shell design of this that kind of looked like a British turtle helmet. Uh, the Mark III, the British Mark III turtle helmet. I have a video on one of those if you want to look at that. And and the Stahlhelm, the 1940 Stahlhelm. It, but it's still... Uh, Hiller rejected that one personally again because it looked too foreign, uh, I guess was the uh, reasoning for rejecting that one. And then, uh, yada, 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 stuff goes on. War ends, all right? And then now East Germany is looking for a helmet, okay? They want to... Denazify, they want to get rid of the Stahlhelms, all right, and they're looking for their own helmet, but they really don't want to take Soviet helmets. So this is something that was sitting around after the war, and uh, they they put it into production. They used it all the way, in some version or another, all the way up into the 90s. Um, so now there's a couple main versions. They're known as the Type 1, the Type 2, and the Type 3. Uh, they all have different names on the collector's market. I think one is like the M56-57. Then there's like the M56-57. Something or other. I think it's like 60. And then there's like the M56-71. And the M56-76. Uh, I think those are the models off the top of my head. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Um, but the first one uh, was pretty much identical to the 1942 version it took the 
the normal like Stahlhelm liner with the three little brackets and the big rivets up here. All right. And that one was used for a few years, and then they, they came out with a uh, an improved version that had foam and stuff like that, and the rivets were set up higher, <clears throat> and it had little arms that come down, because uh, that would in, uh, that way the, the liner isn't directly riveted to the shell, so there's some play in it, which means when you get, uh, when there's an impact to the helmet, it's not transferring all that impact into your skull, it acts like a spring, so it helps negate some of that. And then there um, was a version that was just like this one, but it had little rivets on the outside, little dimples. They weren't really like rivets, but little dimples on the outside that would hold in the little spikes that held in the liner, and I'll show you that later. And then this is the latest version that is completely rivetless, which means there is no weak spots on this helmet shell that um, are going to cause problems. Like when with most steel helmets that have rivets, if a bullet was to hit or a piece of shrapnel was to hit right on that rivet, it would go through because it's a weak spot in the helmet. So they went to a completely rivetless design for the final one uh, in the mid-70s. So, uh, and this is that version. So, uh, we'll take a look at the liner here now. Now, the chin strap stayed pretty much the same for all the helmet designs. It was kind of this uh, studded with the uh, keyhole uh, four-point chin strap. So chin strap is connected to the liner though all right and the liner is this uh plastic adjustable now this is in the last three versions of the helmet all right uh so the plastic liner is uh the only the first version had the the steel liner in it so all the trial ones in world war ii in the first production the actual like m56 type one had the steel liner in it so and that one also had a different kind of a tongue system on it it didn't have this kind of uh, sweatband piece in the front that allows you to adjust uh, the circumference of the helmet. Um, I currently got this one as wide as it'll go and it just barely fits, uh, but it fits comfortably so I'm not, not too worried about it. Now the size is stamped on the inside of the shell somewhere, but I just don't, I don't remember where. Um, but it fits. So and uh, it has these big foam pads for uh, impact protection. It's actually a very, very high quality foam to its uh, open cell foam so it does absorb water and stuff like that which kind of sucks but it also dries fast uh, because of that the leather they used is actually a very nice leather it's not too thin um, it's not too thick it's not um, too soft and it's not too stiff either so it um, it takes sweat very nice uh, and it would form very very nice to your head I got this one without a drawstring but that's not too big of an issue uh, I got plenty of extra drawstrings laying around and it sits on this plastic liner uh, instead of the original aluminum one like it would have had or like the Stahlhelms had uh, the 35s, 40s, and 42s that were actually used in World War II had all aluminum liners or steel liners uh, that would be riveted in place with split pins. Uh, but this one, as you can see here, uh, you can see that little metal stud right there that sticks through the helmet. That's actually part of the helmet shell. And this liner just slips over those studs. All right. Now there is a... Um, as you can see by this, there is six tongues on this liner, and each one of those liner arms goes to a stud on the inside of the helmet shell. Now, the one before this would have had six little little dimples where the studs were around the outside, and the one before that would have had, uh, I think it was four split pins up here, and the model before that would have had three split pins lower in the same configuration, so one in the back and one in each temple as the... Uh, Stahlhelms used in World War II. So, but this helmet ended up being uh, used for a very long time. It was actually a very, very effective steel helmet. Uh, a lot of these helmets are being sent as aid now to other countries, um, such as um, Afghanistan. Afghanistan get, got a lot of these helmets. Uh, this is one of the three helmets that were approved for use in Afghanistan because it's one of the few modern, feasible steel helmets because of its shape, uh, because of that aggressive slope on it. So, and uh, it was thought for the uh, Afghan National Army that most of the army that isn't going to be seeing combat should be using steel helmets because, uh, so like the people in supplies and stuff like that and like Quartermaster Corps and things don't need a full-on Kevlar helmet because those are hard to maintain, they're expensive. And um, these were all readily available for all these ex-Soviet countries. So they, they uh, accepted three helmets for use in the uh, ANA and that was the, the East German M56 uh, 
the Russian SSH-68 and the Romanian uh, M73 helmet. So all those helmets have all those helmets have same three things in in common. They are all very aggressively sloped, so they can uh, deflect uh, shrapnel very easy. And the cool thing about steel is is uh, it's very easy to maintain. Uh, they're very cheap to make, uh, very cheap to operate, and everything like that. So, um, hopefully you guys like this video. I know it's been requested for a while. I got a few other ones I should do here because uh, I haven't been putting up videos as much. I haven't had a haven't had a day off in a while, and I've been hanging out with my girlfriend and stuff like that because uh, her apartment is a lot nicer than mine. Because uh, mine is a billion degrees. Uh, which kind of sucks because I live on the third floor. So, but um, hopefully you guys like this uh, video. I know it's been requested for a long time. And uh, hopefully you guys uh, leave me a comment, uh, correcting me with anything I got wrong. I did a lot of this off the top of my head. I know I probably should have read, read a little bit before I did it. But um, uh, hopefully I didn't get too much wrong. This is almost kind of a challenge now to see if I if I did get it all right or not. Um, feel free if you have any questions or comments or suggestions for future videos to leave those in the comments and I'll do my best to try to figure out YouTube's new fucking comment system and the activity thing. So um, hopefully it works here. Uh, so even if uh, you are the first person to watch this video, leave me a comment so I can at least try to start figuring out how the comments work and shit like that, please. And uh, we'll go from there. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.